featuring the wing of Kingsborough Community College and your Kingsborough Community College Tigers. At this time, will you please rise from your caps as we honor our with the play of our national anthem. This is QCC alum David Russell along with Joe Massey. Queensboro about to take on Kingsboro. Kingsboro, led by former Queensboro coach Bob DiNardo, is starting five. Keaton Shakes, Ardita Shoptofovic, Melvia Thomas, Tylasia Goldborn, and Jennifer Herrera starting five for the Lady Tigers. Reva Ward, Nicole Chavez, Samira Ahmed, Marva Dudley Adams, and Ashanti Rogers. Queensboro has one win this year. It came at Kingsboro against the Wave team that has no wins. This is one of the few should win games for Queensboro. Queensboro won that game by three points. Kingsboro's next closest game was decided by 27. And Bob DiNardo, at one point they had three or four players and he had to take a few cheerleaders, put them in uniform. He took one, one girl from, was in the class of his assistant coach and now she's on the team, so been a rough ride for Bob. Uh, yes. And uh, he has uh, tried to stay afloat, so to speak, and uh, now tonight comes in here with a chance uh, to uh, make Queensboro's life a little bit tougher if uh, he can get one here. We will see if he can get one here, David. Well, the first matchup between these two teams was actually a good game, and Kingsborough led after three quarters, and a turnover five seconds into the game. Doesn't start out very well for Kingsborough, and, and it'll be a Queens, a Queensboro ball out of the backcourt. You know, it's it, it's just hard when you've had so many breaks go against you. Ward misses the shot, shakes with the rebound. Kingsborough's last win came in February of 2015. Funny thing is, uh, in his previous stops, Donardo was a winner, and uh, you know it's not easy to field a women's team at Kingsborough. That's uh, the basic of it. He was saying how tough the recruiting is out there where it's a beautiful school and great facilities, but if you don't drive, it's tough to get to. And there's a three-pointer from Shaptophobic. 
And she's the one you have to watch. She's averaging 12 points per game. Queensboro with the answer, Nicole Chavez. Chavez, who has given us some uh, good bright spots this year, as have some of the Queensboro Tigers. Now they're in a zone here early on. Shaptovovic went up and under, but no good. Ward to Ahmed. Ahmed takes the jumper, no good. And chased down by Goldborn. The sophomore, the one sophomore on this Kingsboro team. Yeah, there's the thing, you know, when he gets kids on the team, then he can't even keep them on the team. And as you said, he's had to go places to get players in a hurry and plug in spots. Down to three on the shot clock. Shaptovic, no good, tipped, and Chavez has it. Chavez taking it all the way, no good. The ball back to Kingsboro. Oh, thought maybe that ball was deflected by Tehovic getting back. I thought so, but they give the ball back to Kingsboro and Chavez didn't say anything. It did look from up here like it may have been tipped. They get a good look at that zone again with 7.36 to go in the first quarter. Kingsboro might be a little more up for this one. They might know this might be their best chance for a win this season. So there's an air ball. Well, you don't expect your best shooter to shoot an air ball in that situation, but that's kind of the way they've gone this year. Last few years. Ahmed, no good. Ahmed didn't hit the shot, but nothing stops her. And she continued on with the move, couldn't hit that little pull up. Oh, there's the offensive board. As Ward is going, how is there no foul? Queensboro looking for their first lead of the game, a little over three minutes in. Dudley Adams, high arcing shot, air ball. And the way this has started, it's going to remain 3-2 for a while, it looks like. That's uh, a good pitcher's uh, duel. <laughs> <laughs> and that shot is banked in. I was asking for offense, and she answered it right there. Ahmed can't answer. Nothing but blue jerseys there for the rebound. Chaptophobic. Gets it back. Staring at this 2-3 zone. So far, they haven't gotten bad shots. Uh, and that shot is good. Goldborn. Kingsborough leads 7-2. Well, this is definitely not the start Queensboro wanted as they uh, attack the Kingsboro zone on the other end. Chavez called for traveling. Remember Queensboro last year, the last time we saw them? Since yes, then, they, they went yeah. to LaGuardia. They lost by 47. It was only a five point game after the first quarter, and then they were run out of the gym in the final 30 minutes. Be nice if it was a one quarter game, right? <laughs> we would be saying that a lot this year. This is just not on par for the uh, Lady Tigers. Good rebound there by Dudley Adams. Second uh, tough year in a row. Ahmed, nice fake shot, no good. But chase down, goes right out to Dudley Adams for three, and she misses. So an ice cold start for Queensboro with two points in the first 5-10. Well, basically what they've struggled with, Dave, uh, as well as not having numbers, is they don't have a real go-to player this year. Dudley Adams might be it if you had to name one. She gives it 
the best out there all the time, and she does her best to keep them in games. But you know what I'm saying. They don't have a uh, uh, a top-notch uh, community college star that they've had in the past. Not and like there have been Hanoi several Carol, of them. Yes. Like we've seen. Timeout called by Bob DiNardo. Now, you put Dudley Adams on a team like that, and uh, she's an all-star. Oh, she would have fit right in with those. Yeah. some of those winning teams. I'm nothing if I'm not honest. But, you know, being an all-star is not bad at all. No. But when you get to the level that Kanoi or Carroll or any of them, Redwood got to, you have to be a real go-to player you have to be able to manufacture points at a moment's notice and you have to basically be able to lead the team to a championship and they really don't have anybody that can do that on their own this year it's true like i said dudley adams would be and you said it too she'd be a good part of one of those uh, top teams chavez for three no good Tipped around and Dudley Adams with the offensive rebound. Chavez in the lane, floater, good. That found its way over the rim for Chavez on the move. It's 7 4. It's funny, no fouls have been called in this game, and there really haven't been too many turnovers. It's just a lot of no, shots. It's, it's Kingsboro 7, Chavez 4. <laughs> I'll tell you this Kingsboro is moving the ball, and they're doing some good things to get open shots. Shaptovic missed the three. If they're gonna win, she's gonna have to have a big game. See if Chavez can even the score. No, they're gonna go outside for it and they won't get it. Ward missed the three. First meeting, Kingsboro led by six after the first quarter. Then Queensboro slowly made it up during the final three quarters. That three rims out. We have our first foul of the game. It's going to go to Kingsboro, uh, the foul against Queensboro. Rogers got the foul. She's shown at times during the year Rogers might pick up one or two, two or three fouls in a hurry. Ahmed got behind the defense and lays it in off glass. And it's 7 6 Kingsboro. Ahmed Stormed to the basket and makes it 7 6. And a foul against Queensboro. Well, they're trying to get into the game defensively now. They're trying to jut in there and make some plays. As Kingsboro has basically been very patient here in the early going. There's a turnover. Chavez. Back to Ahmed. Good save. Back to Chavez yeah. and off glass. Good save and then a good pass back by Ahmed and they got the basket. Maybe Chavez. the trickiest uh, two on one that we've seen in a while. Queensboro with their first lead of the game. It's 8 7. They've scored the last six points because Kingsboro has gone cold. Herrera, three-pointer, banks it in. Jennifer Herrera, 10-8, Lady Wave. Now they didn't have the lead for long there. Ahmed, jumper, no good. Tipped around and Goldborn has it for Kingsboro. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter. Thomas to Goldborn. Chaptophobic, jumper, no good, and rebounded by Rogers. Again, there are not very many numbers on that Queensboro bench over there. Well, Ahmed lays it in. We're tied at 10. Chavez and Ahmed with all the points for Queensboro. That's it. Ooh. 
pass goes through the hands of Goldborn. and it was a little high. Erica Whidbey in for Kingsborough. Herrera to the bench. Oh, we mentioned many times that if a med can learn to control herself, she can be a better player out there against certain competition. And she's having a pretty good game tonight so far. Ward bats it to Chavez. And she volleyballed yeah. out to her. And Ahmed called for traveling. Final minute of the first quarter. Thomas, pardon me, it's Goldborn with the long two. 12-10 Lady Wave. Nice uh, all net on that, just inside of three. Ahmed to Rogers. Rogers from the free throw line, no good. Kingsborough can basically hold for the final shot and Bob DiNardo is yelling one shot. And the offensive foul. Boy, that's tough, Chase. isn't it? Bob wanted the last shot. You could see him over there uh, in a little pain over that one. <laughs> it's tough when you're telling the team not to do anything. Yeah. All you have to do is nothing, and they right. commit the foul. Never, Adams. never tell them not to do something. And that's going to be a travel. Thomas lost her footing, may have Some, been tripped. Sometimes you're better off Bob saying. Bob DiNardo off the bench for the first time. Sometimes you're better off just saying, do what you want. Rogers, no good, got her own rebound. Counted on the foul. Rogers with 1.4 to go in the first quarter. You can't let that happen either. And if, you know, it sounds funny, but if you're a losing team, you just don't want those things to happen. And Bob's not very happy about either of those final plays right there. I mean, Kingsboro should be winning. Rogers misses the free throw. We're tied at 12 after one. He's not winning and uh, really had the better of that first quarter. Seemed like it. But you know, Queensboro, you know, they haven't won the amount of games they won in the past, but they are always a game club and they're always ready to uh, give you a, uh, a tussle if you allow them to. So, I tell you, in a weird way, this is probably two of the teams on the bottom part of the conference. That could make for a pretty good game, though. It should. When you're talking about two teams with equal talent, it's not going to be a blowout. The only thing with Queensboro is they, they don't have that feeling that they've been at the bottom of the conference for so many years. So uh, if you give them a chance, they could pop up and bite you at some point. I mean, they can beat one of the better teams in the conference if they let them, if they don't come in and play their number one game. Like, I'm, seriously, when they were playing Bronx here, um, they gave them a scare at the end of the game. Right. And I went to coach, and I, because he was telling me about the tale of two teams with Bronx, and I said, which team was that? And he said, you saw what happened in the third quarter. So, you know, if you let Queensboro, they can be dangerous even with that, not that many girls. <laughs> and the record that they have. So you don't want to do that, especially when you're playing in here. This, uh, for all intents and purposes, should be a very competitive game tonight. You're right. Now, I don't know. I have uh, some strange feeling tonight, Dave, that uh, the Queensboro men have a chance to pick up their first conference win. Chavez misses that. And I don't know why, so we'll see you later on. 
And that would be their first conference win, right? Yes, it would. Yes. We'll talk more about that during the men's game. Absolutely. We have a close one here. It's tied at 12. Opening minute of the second quarter. Goldborn called for traveling. Yeah, she was throwing that pass. She lifted Bob DiNardo, her uh, pivot foot. Going, come on. <laughs> she lifted her pivot foot. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to talk while you were talking. She lifted her pivot foot when she was throwing the pass. Dudley Adams for three in front of the Kingsborough bench. No good. Rogers, the offensive rebound out to Ward. Ward for three. No good. And another traveling is called. They did a good job of not really turning the ball over early on. Now, had a chance to uh, speak to Bob for uh, about 10, 15 minutes before the game and uh, asked him if he was going down to the water club at the end of the year. Is he? Yes. Okay. We used to go down there when he was coaching in the senior colleges. And uh, we'd sit there and chat for a while. He's, he's a, a good guy. Goldborn jumper from the free throw line off the mark. There's an offensive rebound. Went right to Whitby and now going the other way is Ward. It's a three on one. There's a nice pass and the layup is good. Beautiful passing right there. I like that. Ward with the steal and then dribbles it out of bounds. Ward almost had the pick off and she would have had clear court to get down there. Have to put a little more zip on those passes. You can't take chances against the zone. Coolborn, long two, air ball. Herrera trying to save it in and can't. Ball back to the Lady Tigers. So the Tigers get ahead on the board, get the ball back off the miss there. Now they're working it down on this end. Ward for three, it's good. And Queensboro leads 17-12. Ward, one of those players on this club, David, that can turn it on at times. Mm -hmm. Kingsborough looking for a basket. Queensborough with the last seven points. Goulborn go inside Herrera. Thomas, air ball. That just didn't have a chance to make it there. Ed, there's a long two, no good. Goulburn with the rebound on a hop. Shaptophobic. She might need another three-pointer or two oh, or three you, of them. Yeah, you see King, Kingsboro goes very slow on offense. They really have to play like that. And there's a three. She it's, has two of them now. Mm -hmm. But they have to play like that, David, because when yeah. the game speeds up, they are overmatched. They get some pretty good looks out of those deliberate sets. Yes, they do. And you have to work with what you have. Long two is no good. And as long as you don't turn over the ball, you're all right. Shaptovic, another three, no good. May have hit the wire above the basket. Ball think, back to Queensboro. I think that's what happened. And so Queensboro gets it with the two point lead. And David's going to get Ahmed right back in there. He let her sit for a few minutes. Ahmed. 
to Rogers. Bounce pass Ward. Three pointer. No good. Ahmed flies in for the offensive board. Side Dudley Adams for three. No good. Loose ball picked up by Rogers. To Queensboro. Second and third chances. Ahmed. And it rims out. Wow. It was it was down and it just popped out for her. Then it bounced past to nobody. He's turned over. Ward going to the basket. Counted and the foul. Reva Ward. Ward has made a couple of big shots in this first half. There was one she took it down the right side, would not be denied, put the ball in and got fouled too. I give her credit for exploding to the basket there. The Queensboro playing very, uh, very uh, upbeat basketball right now, going after the loose balls, getting people in position. And you could feel that they know what the level of the competition is tonight also, the way they're playing. Ward makes a free throw. When she doesn't, she kind of stepped into it. Don't see that a lot. 2015 Lady Tigers. They usually don't make the free throws either. Goulburn and air ball, they kind of rushed that one. Ward the other way. Up ahead, a long jumper is too long. That was a tough one because Kingsborough's outside shooting has really betrayed them in the last four minutes here. Not only are they missing, but they're not even getting it to the basket. So uh, it's been difficult and they need a timeout here. Bob DiNardo with the 30 second timeout. Neither one of these teams really going to the basket a lot. I don't know if it's because they don't want to get in foul trouble or risk getting in foul trouble with the short rosters. Could be. And the uh, Tigers have gone a little more than Kingsboro has. Kingsboro's not even <laughs> taken it to the hoop in this first half. And once again, the Queensboro ladies, they don't have the big numbers. They have one person sitting on that bunch tonight. So. Uh, Kingsborough's not a team, though, that's going to run players in and out and uh, take them out of their game. So uh, very good prospect for a win here tonight, and they know that. They can push the pedal a little more tonight. Shaptofovic gets it to Goldborn. Back to Shaptofovic. They're really overplaying her right now. They don't want her having the ball. Herrera back to Goldborn. Shaptofovic down to five on the shot clock. Tough jumper, no good. Good defense by Queensboro. Ahmed going all the way to the basket, no good. Knocked around and the Lady Wave have it. Ahmed made the swooping move to the hoop, had everything but the proper arc to get the basket. Look at where they're picking her up, David. They're not letting uh, her get a very good look. There they throw her a pick, but not much done with it. Gonna have to put it up, Goldborn. No good, as the shot clock was running out. Under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Queensboro 20, Kingsboro 15. Ward, blocking foul is called. That's the uh, second time she's gotten foul going to the basket, so give her credit. Ward has been active. You're looking for ladies you were a couple of minutes ago who are taking it to the basket. She's one of them. First one is no good. Chavez going back in for Queensboro. He's got a very short rotation, huh? <laughs> and not by choice. Yeah. Ward splits the free throws. She has well, seven. To be honest with you, neither one of these clubs are here the way they are by choice. 
And that's tough. That's tough. Left. Chavez picks the pocket. And now a two on one. Chavez will take it herself and lay it in off glass. She did it perfectly. You know, go to the basket, and if you get fouled, you get fouled. But you got to keep your eye on getting that basket there, and that's what she did. Shaptifovic steps into a three, and it's no good. Ward to Ahmed. Nice pump fake. Rogers to Dudley Adams. A long two. Well short. And Herrera with the rebound. Well. Kingsborough can use a basket here. They're eight points down, like to get closer going to halftime. So let's see what they run to try to get it. Got to get the big shooter. She's out there and they didn't go that way. Chavez behind the defense and she lays it in. And all of a sudden, Queensboro leads 25-15. Chavez doing a good job of being a basket hanger, uh, the way she's playing, getting down there. Chavez has 10 points. And another turnover, and then a foul. And this is getting away from Kingsborough in a hurry. They got a player now with three fouls, too. Goldborn. She has to leave the game. They're still playing the zone as uh, Queensboro moves it up to 11 to go in the first half. Ward makes the jumper. 27 15. I, I don't know if Kingsboro has enough offensive firepower to even make up this deficit. No, they have to play precise. They can't make too many mistakes. Shaptifovic all the way in, but no good. Rogers with the rebound. Chavez dropped it, but Queensboro still has numbers. Ward overthrows Ahmed. Too much mustard on that hot dog, please. Now, you know what? They're going to have to get Shaptifovic in the game and just you know, let her go off a little bit, and they got to figure out a way to do that. I mean, Kingsboro had one game where they scored 11 points at Suffolk, and they had four points through the first three quarters. Wow. It's been a, an offensively challenged team. That hurts. Yeah, they lost their last game to BMCC 69-20. There's the, an offensive uh, foul. They're going to let her take more charge in the game, but it didn't work out there as the offensive foul was committed. It's rare for them to even get 30 points in the game. Somebody trying to get her a pick to go around and move to the wrong spot. Chavez off glass, no good. And Herrera with the rebound. Chavez has had some feisty games this year. This is, I think, her best we've seen here so far. Up to Fovic, no good. Getting right back to her here. Herrera takes that three and it's good. Her second three of the game. Well, they got it to the right place anyway. A girl that can shoot it from outside. And they're within nine now. Chavez, no good. Right to Ahmed. Back to Chavez who dribbles out. Ward, long two, no good. Tip Dudley Adams with the offensive board and she's fouled. Kingsborough with small team having trouble corralling the rebounds. You gotta like their effort tonight, Dave. But uh, you know, I, uh, not the competition notwithstanding. Yeah, you, you gotta like the way they're playing. They're really hustling, and they built a nine-point lead here, and they hope to improve on it now. Flying in for offensive rebounds. Very good. Nice basketball game for them. First free throw is short. Kingsborough can hold for the final shot. We'll see if they do this time. Remember the first quarter they committed a foul. Then Queensborough went down and scored to tie it. And I said, you never know, you know, you catch fire here and then you go into somebody else's house. 
and you might you might surprise them and win a game. You never know. Chavez almost stole it. Bob DiNardo's going. How, how does that happen? Bob has always tried to be a teacher on the bench, uh, the teaching type. And that's not the way by Chavez. He doesn't have enough pupils, though, right now. I think the, this is the best we've seen Chavez this year. Yeah, it is. She's playing a terrific game. Going to get a good shot here if you're Kingsborough. It's only 16 seconds left. Get to get something. Down to eight seconds. Herrera, Shaptofovic, launches a three. No good. Shakes with the offensive rebound and then throws it right to Ahmed. And that'll do it for the first half. Well, they're only 10 points down, Kingsboro, but a very good half for Queensboro uh, as it went along. And they showed a little more uh, zeal out there and a little more assertiveness. A 16 to six second quarter for Queensboro. We'll see if the Lady Wave can cut into the, the lead and make a game of it in the second half. Second half about to begin. Queensboro leading 28-18, a strong second quarter. Kingsboro just trying to hang in there after struggling for a large part of the second quarter. And Chavez leading the way with the Lady Tigers, 10 points and Ward right behind her with nine. Who's leading Kingsboro, Dave? Uh, Shaptophobic and Herrera have six apiece. Well, if they don't get Shaptophobic, really involved in this game, they don't have a chance to win, so that's obvious. And there she is for three. It's no good, but Herrera with the offensive board, and she is fouled. I'm not saying they have to be a one-woman team, but I'm saying they have to get her the ball, and, and everybody else has to do their part. Might have to be, be a few threes from her, a few threes from Herrera. That yeah. Might, yep. That might be the formula. And stop turning the ball over. Step to Fovic. Well, throws that to Ahmed. And then a double, double dribble. dribble. You've seen the movie The Nutty Professor, right, Dave? Yeah. With Jerry Lewis, right? I've seen the Eddie Murphy one, too. Wow. And the Eddie Murphy one. But he's looking for the formula. Remember, always looking for mm -hmm. the formula. That's what sprang to my mind when you said formula. <laughs> the ball will stay with Kingsborough. Yeah, the Eddie Murphy one was done really well, too. They, you know, when you to talk about the other film, the other film was a classic. So you had to make a good film to redo that. There's an air ball. That's probably one of the better remakes that you'll get. Absolutely. By the way, I saw that one and Jerry Maguire at about the same time. And I thought Jerry Maguire was a great movie. I really, really enjoyed them. They gave Cuba Gooding Jr. the Oscar. I think just because you liked it so much, they said now we have to give it to him. Never realized his father was the uh, lead singer of a, a soul group in the 70s. Yeah, I forget which group it was, but that's right. I'll let you know in a minute. <laughs> I know you'll be thinking about it for the second half. They did Everybody Plays the Fool and... The main Other ingredient. Hits. Main ingredient. There you go. Right. Ahmed. 30-18. In fact, uh, Kuba Gooding, at, when he attended the wedding in the uh, in the movie, uh, Jerry Maguire was singing, and uh, I think his wife was commenting on his lack of singing prowess. <laughs> and that was pretty funny. He was trying to sing like his father. Rogers picks up her third foul. Well, Bob Donardo's over there on the Kingsboro bench saying, show me the money at the line here. <laughs> Rogers, 
Maybe not with the enthusiasm that was used in Jerry Maguire, though. <laughs> Shaptophobic makes both. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those movies where everybody was great, though. Just everybody in the movie was really great. Even the even the guy Cuba G- Gooding Jr.'s brother-in-law was great in that movie. Everybody. When he said, "Hey, brother Maguire." <laughs> Go back outside, Shaptophobic. Goldborn says, no, I'm not going inside. Five seconds on the shot clock, she'll have to launch one. Goldborn, a long two is no good. Tip to Chavez. Chavez right out there and the ball gets directed in right to her. And Chavez gets the roll. And this is by far the, the best we've seen her this season. She has 12 points now. Yeah, she's playing with purpose. She knows she can get up court, and she's done it several times tonight. Shaptophobic is fouled. She made a strong move to the basket, knew she was going to get hit in there. They have to always be careful that they don't get her hurt either driving in the lane, because if that happens, and I hate to say it, but where are they? I mean... First one is no good. Usually you see a girl shoot well from outside. She's a good free throw shooter. That had a good form. It just spun out of the basket. And she misses both. Ahmed to Ward. Go inside, lost out of bounds. The pass was good. The girl got bumped from behind, and she couldn't hold on to the ball. 32-20, a little over three minutes into the third quarter. David Chambers wants them to get set on defense, and uh, they popped into it right there, almost had a steal. Ahmed has it after Shaptophobic. Let it go through her hands. Ahmed lays it in. Oh, and Matt, a little bit of elevation on that layup. She, yeah. she started to carry it towards the basket. I always love when I see that. Goolborn for three. Air ball. Whidbey tries to save it in. Too late, though. You know who really made that move uh, in the old days? A, a perfection, uh, Clyde Drexler. He really fashioned that type of thing. The glide. Yeah. 34 20 Queensboro, a chance to put the game away here with the two or three more baskets. Well, they can afford to be cautious, and they are. And Chavez with the offensive rebound, Dudley Adams for three. No good. And hits. Hit the old top of the backboard, yep. Dave. The old top of the backboard. 5.48 to go in the third quarter. Kingsboro in a deep position right now. They, they need some points. And they're all over their top scorer right now. There's a three-pointer from Herrera. No good. Whidbey gets it. Not looking to shoot. I'm saying, what do I do with it here? <laughs> Shaptophobic for three, no good. Oh, she gets a friendly oh. roll. Oh. That was uh, the shooter bounce right well, there. Ahmed to the basket and then travels. You know, you called that correctly. That was no good but good. <laughs> that shot right there. Kingsborough's hanging around. Well, get get the ball to Shaptophobic and see what she can do and just... Nice move on Chavez, her jumper, no good, and missed. Ahmed the other way, and she lays it in. Well, that's that's what happens when you break down, though, and uh, Queensboro's taken advantage of that a lot tonight. And Ahmed has 10 points now. 
She's having one of her better games. Poolborn air balls a two. Dudley Adams was left all alone. Mrs. Chavez with the offensive rebound, but then she misses. Tried to save it, but Kingsboro will have it. Well, as you know, Kingsborough's down by 13, and you look over there and you say, well, what's, what's Bob going to do? And, you know, Davey really has to coach like he's in this ballgame. I mean, they're only 13 points down. He's going to bring them over now and try to reassess what he had already assessed. And that's what he... That's the type of game he has to play here. It's tricky for David Chambers because in a way you would think he would like to maybe press Kingsboro and just kind of run them out of here, but he, he might not be deep enough to put yeah, that on. He might hurt himself because they're playing well as it is. Just let them continue to do what they're doing. Now, I mean, if you're over there and you're Denardo, what are you telling your team right now? You, you, maybe you don't like a few shots they took. Maybe you're telling them they didn't get back on defense in certain spots. But I, it looks it looks like he's being very uh, assertive with them, but not you know not downgrading them at all. Remember, you, you've known him for a long time, and I remember he came here and coached for one year. And, you know, if you watched his previous teams when he was even on the senior college level, they were they were good ball clubs. I mean, we were talking. I was talking to him about the one in uh, – excuse me, David. I don't want to go back too far, but I was talking about the one he brought into Lehman College in 205 and did a terrific job in the uh, tournament semi. And not just the fact that he had good teams there, as Goldborn misses, loose ball, and that'll be it. Ward gets it to Dudley Adams. Miss Chavez, another offensive rebound, right back to Dudley Adams, no basket. Push off off the ball is. Is he? I think he, maybe the pass hit the line, or Dudley Adams was standing on the line. But I was going to say, not just Denardo winning at the senior college, but the turnaround that he did to get to a winning team. I'll tell you another thing as I was on the uh, pregame hunt here just a few minutes before you got here. John Hotberg, who is now running uh, Queensboro as the athletic director, he was an assistant coach at Lehman College with uh, Steve Schulman over there. And he worked for Dr. Uh, Swearin at Lehman College. And I did not know that. Miscommunication, turnover, Chavez the other way. And two more points. No, there wasn't miscommunication. I just did not know that. Oh, no, you were talking about the play. All right. 38-23, 3.15 to go in the third. So then I said, you know what, John? Now that you told me your last name, I remember you on the roster sheet on the assistant coaches uh, chart next to Steve Schulman. How do you like that? It's a small world, isn't it? Especially when you're going from the Bronx to Queens. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll watch uh, Kingsboro at the line where they get a break down on this end here. That free throw is no good. So I'm going to go to Lehman College at, uh, in about four days, and I'm going to I'm going to tell Steve Schulman the same story I told you. Ahmed left alone and misses anyway. Well, can Kingsboro get back in this? They need her to get hot right here. Just just get it into single digits and maybe put a little of the pressure back on Queensboro. You had to move the ball and get her open because uh, the Lady Tigers are pointing the defense right at Chapnahobic. 
Shakes actually had a pretty good look, but missed. And then you have to work off that and get a good shot if you can manufacture one. That jumper is good. 40-24. That was almost a three right there, Dave. In fact, I thought it was. Ow. There's another turnover. Ahmed. And a blocking foul is called. Now it's starting to turn into the proverbial route. And Kingsborough has to find a way to shut the door right here. Dudley Adams, the spin and the shot off glass. Her first field goal of the game. She's been pretty quiet tonight, only three points, but Queensboro leads 42-24. Starting to look like a snowball rolling down a hill. Dudley Adams. She's gonna go all the way and lay it in again. 44-24 and I think the route is on. Student night here at Queensboro. And there's another turnover. And it's 46-24. And Bob DiNardo calls timeout. See, the psyche on these kids is so, so brittle. And, you know, Kingsborough was staying in the game. But if you don't feel like it could come back, then the dam breaks loose. And uh, Queensboro's on a big run right now. It was 38-24. They just ran off eight points. I said it was 38-24, and maybe they make it into single digits to make it a game. And Queensboro's just been running them out of the gym the last few minutes. And they participated by giving them a nice, here you go, pass, take it up court, if you will. And their uh, co collective minds have been out of the game, taken out of the game. Now, this is what happens when you lose and when you have a very uh, a slight uh, sense of what's going on. Bob DiNardo was up on the bench clapping, a little more animated than we usually see him. I think he might have to be that, that way with this group of players. I tell him, hey, the game is 40 minutes. So let's yeah. not just pack you know, it in for the final 15. You know, David, he's got a whole uh, maybe uh, less than a quarter of a schedule to play. And uh, what's he going to do? I thought this was their best chance for a win Yeah. the rest of the year. They haven't won a game. This year, they didn't win a game last year. Well, so it'll be nice if they can close the gap here a little bit and uh, not make this a total car wreck for them. But they have turned it over now about five times in a row. And that's not going to help at all. Do I hear six? Six. Chavez. Toward. Ahmed. Oh, inside, and it's 48-24. Doing whatever they want right now. Not often we say that about Queensboro. First time this year we say that about Queensboro. Because remember, their one other well, one was at Kingsboro, but that was a three-point game. That was. You know, you get jacked up enough here, and you take it into your next road game, and uh, you don't know what happens either. This is this is very easy right now. Oh. 50-24. You have to feel David Chambers, who's a great competitor, feels he can win a few of these games down the stretch anyway. I mean, based on a whole season, it's not going to be a good season, but you pull off a couple of upsets and you, you, something, something to hang your hat on. Well, this game was tied after one quarter at 12-12, and Kings Row has scored 12 points since then, and they trail 50-24. Queensboro is the best we've seen them this year. Hey, you got a feel for Bob over there. He's been put up against it, and uh, it's happening again here tonight, 
as you said, his last outing was no better than this one. And it's it was a, against a much better team, by the way. I'm a little surprised by this about not not to I, I don't know how afraid to, but I'm surprised that it, it's a blowout like this. Well, David, you know, he can't play for them. And uh, once they start losing their confidence, it gets very difficult at that but, point. Well, we weren't even sure if Queen Farrell was capable of blowing out another team. Well, they are. Yeah, they are tonight for sure. And I'll just uh, I'll just turn the attention quickly to the men Tigers again. They they're watching this, and I'm sure they're getting uh, I'm they're getting a little charged up watching this game because neither of these teams has brought many victories uh, in the win column this year. Nope. Any other Cuba Gooding Jr. movies you'd like to discuss? Uh, I like I liked, that race. I liked uh, when he was just a kid. I liked the one he made with, um, uh, you know, Kid in the Hood. And uh, I forgot, I, I think, I forgot the name of the movie. Boys in the Hood. Boys in the Hood. There you go. With a guy playing his father, who I used to go watch when I was a younger guy, who was a young man. Larry, uh, get his last name. The names are escaping you today. It's been so many actors. <laughs> but when I saw he was playing his father, I said, oh, oh, uh oh. <laughs> Time's catching up with us here. <laughs> Lawrence Filborn. Lawrence Fishborn, that's it. The name familiar to you? Yeah. Yes. Well, from The Matrix. Remember, great he was cow- actor. Remember, great he was Cowboy actor. Curtis on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Great actor. Great actor. And that's why Cooper Gooding has never played with anybody but the best. I mean, because Tom Hanks is one of the great ones, I think. Still 50-24, Shaptophovic, no good. Rogers with the rebound. This has got to be a little fun for the Lady Tigers. Absolutely. You don't get very many, so you got to enjoy it. Dudley Adams misses a three. Good times for Dudley I, Adams, I know too. Miss, I, I know Mrs. Dudley Adams is enjoying this one, too, down there, because she always says hello to us, and she's such a bright, cheerful lady. Marva's mom in the crowd tonight, and Marva Dudley Adams, uh, probably happy. She's a Patriots fan, and ah. they're, they're one win away from the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom Brady. <laughs> Hopefully Herrera's okay, holding her nose on the floor. Oh, by no. Free throw uh, line. You know, they wanted anything but something like that to happen, really. And I don't think Queensboro's happy about it either. At this point, it's just about keeping the players healthy. You know, I remember I was in Modell's when the uh, Giants played them in uh, 207. And I told the young man there, I said, the Giants are going to beat them, man. They're going to beat the Brady Bunch today, tomorrow, next week, whatever it is. (laughs) And uh, next week, it it was a week before. I said, they're going to beat them. And uh, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't really sure about it, but I was down Manhattan watching on it. Yeah, I, I have a, I have a, when I go down and watch the Super Bowl, it's a time measured tradition that I'll walk from avenue to avenue and keep watching the game on all the big boards down there and all the TVs and the lounges. And and I saw the tight end for the Giants caught, caught that ball and started downfield. And I said, boy, they're going to win this game. And I didn't think they were going to do it, but they so, did. Even though you told the guy in Models you thought they would. 
But I saw that play, uh, David, right on 42nd Street on the big Times Square board with about 500 people. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure most of them cheering. Yes. That was an unbelievable sight. Rogers with the basket. 52-24. Seeing that on that big board made it a bigger play than it was because we couldn't believe the uh, Tyree had made that catch. Just couldn't believe it. There are probably people uh, in New England who still can't believe it. And now a few words being exchanged. The Queensboro crowd into it. They haven't had a whole lot to cheer about this year. Well, they attending to Herrera. They got her up behind the bench, and they're doing something about her bloody noose. But she, uh, I think she's going to be okay for the most part. One of the people that couldn't in New England who still can't believe it is Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom Brady. <laughs> Pretty funny, though, that the Giants did to him exactly what he did to the Rams in his in his uh, first year playing for the Patriots. What he did so, to a lot of teams, what he did to the Panthers yeah, in that Super Bowl. Yeah, pretty funny. You know, when it comes around and bites you, it's no fun. But uh, he played against one of the great quarterbacks, too, Kurt Warner. He, he, was, he was great. And he wasn't even playing in the pros when they picked him up. Well, we have a 52 to 24 score. That's why this has got into Super Bowl history <laughs> on the uh, on the Explorer Channel. <laughs> Queensboro just came out, measured Kingsboro, and went to work. And uh, and Kingsboro obliging with the uh, numerous turnovers here. Thought we were in for a close one after the first quarter, but Queensboro was uh, asserted their dominance in the last 20 minutes, 22 minutes. By the way, I mentioned the giant tie name. Kevin Voss made the biggest play in that Super Bowl. By the way, he, that early was in the fourth quarter, unbelievable. And he was he was an inexperienced player. Because no, remember, Shockey wasn't playing that postseason, and he was supposed to be the superstar tight end. I, when they brought him in, that's all you were hearing about. Ref having uh, oh, just one more thing about that on the uh, on the yeah. film at the end of the year film video. The official goes up to Copeland and says, "They was tough in Green Bay last year, last week, huh?" He goes, "Yeah, last week my rear end was on the <laughs> in the frying pan and uh, I was freezing them, my nose off there in Green Bay." <laughs> The Giants win in Green Bay were, what, minus one or whatever yeah, it was. You know, yeah. face was beat you, red. You know when it really sets in how cold it is in Green Bay at that time of year when you watch those old Packer films and you see the people with the head uh, covers on and the breath coming out, you know, and it's in black and white. That's when you, wow, that's cold. There's still people uh, who played in that, that ice bowl who still dealt with the frostbite 30, 40 years later. Wow. Dudley Adams for three, no good. Yeah, unfortunately, one of them was the late, great Don Meredith. Hmm. I do like during the game when uh, Frank Gifford was announcing and he goes, I'm gonna take a bite of my coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Seven minutes to go here. Poor guy, he, he lost two chances to go to the Super Bowl in the closing minutes. Both to Green Bay. Yep. Shaptovovic with the jumper. She has 14 points. We were just clearing some time for Shaprahobic to make a shot there. And then a violation on the inbound. 52 to 26. See if Kingsborough can get something started here to get the score a little more respectable. Well, that'll help Thomas, 52-28. Remember, Kingsborough played well early on. They led 7-2. to Yeah, that's when they weren't turning the ball over, though, David. It, as soon as the ball started being turned over, they were in a tough spot because when they get down by 10 or 15 points, they really have a little chance to come back. 
And then, like you said, it was like the snowball rolling. And yeah. And you feel like you you just can't stop it. You know, there's no way to. I think that's the way they felt a lot this year, Kingsboro. Well, it's just nice and like you said, you never know if there's a little uh, carryover for Queensboro now. You never know. I, uh... what, is it, what is it like going into a game coming off a 20-point win? For I mean, this team? isn't the first time I've seen anything, if it does happen, happen like that. I, you always see a team that's struggling, struggling, and they beat some lousy team, and then they go on and they win three or four games. And you say, wow, I didn't think they could do it. Not that Kingsboro's a lousy team. They're just small in numbers of girls who have experience and, uh, and they haven't had enough time together. Kind of the patchwork team in the second semester when Bob is yeah. taking cheerleaders and just girls from the assistant coaches' classes. It's got to wear on him a bit too, right? As even keeled as he is, it's got to be frustrating to watch. I think he has the right personality for it. Well, I, you know, I don't want to be too uh, controversial or anything, but he's in a position where it, he's not worried about whether they're going to say, uh, all right, that's it. He might say it himself, like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. <laughs> but you never know. I mean, you never know what's in a person's mind. I mean, they're not going to tell you that. He still, he still talks about recruiting. It's not like he's giving up. He, he, no, he likes he, to get out there and recruit. He just he, knows how tough it is when you play uh, all the way really by the ocean. He's really a positive guy for the most part, but when you're losing like this, it's never any fun. I think this one tougher than when they thought, well, maybe there's a chance in this one and you play well in the first quarter. But think about this. If he does eventually win here at some time, boy, is that going to be rewarding for him. And maybe we were saying how Queensboro maybe goes on a little run. Maybe Chavez continues this kind of game. 16 points tonight. Is Chavez a freshman or a sophomore? Freshman. Well, let's get the only be a sophomores big, are uh, Dudley Adams and a Yeah, bat. that's a big game for her. There are two more points, and Nicole Chavez has 18 now. Yeah, once again, we're talking about two-year players, and uh, that's the other part of it for Donardo. He can change his team around in one year if he really has the uh, things fall in the right place. But so. stuff you can't even – like if you're at a senior college, and even even if you're really, really terrible for t even two years, at least you could say, oh, right, his upperclassmen, maybe they get some stuff done. But here they lose, and they're gone right away. And there's a basket from Shakes. 56-30. Well, the big challenge for them is keeping girls on the squad when they get them. If they get one of his players is hurt, by the way, that he was going to depend on. So that never helps. There's a traveling. But that was one of the things when I was talking to uh, Nolan Adams. Remember, he used to coach the BMCC men. And now he's at York. Yeah. He's one of the reasons. Big job ahead of him. Yeah, he was saying one of the reasons he likes being able to work with the four-year players being able to develop guys for four years. As, as good as he was at BMCC and as much as he liked it, it's a little tricky when it's guys coming in like a revolving door. But you know, you have a lot of pressure on you because you step into York where they're a consistent winner for so many years. And uh, Chavez with 20. People uh, who follow the program are not willing to be that patient. So uh, you got to you got to kind of double up on your effort over there. He won a game last week against Brooklyn, which was a big win for him. Shaptovovic, another friendly roll. She has 16. She's gotten her points uh, here and there, but it's not enough because they uh, let. Queensboro run up the score. Down to 240 to play. 
So anyway, Bob DiNardo, of course, is going to try to bring some more young ladies in here at Kingsborough. As we said, it's a challenging job to do that. And that's why hope springs eternal when you're coaching these two-year teams because you can change them around in maybe a year. Could, it could take place. And I will give him his due. He did it at Baruch one time in his career. He's not as young as he used to be, neither am I. But uh, you feel like if you did it once, you can do it again. <laughs> Neither one of us are, are, are as uh, neither one of us are as old as David, though. That's for sure. I hope Dave didn't hear that one. <laughs> Two twenty-five to go. She's Chavez to the Chavez. basket, and it's good. And she has twenty-two. Oh, she's really gone to it. She's been the eye of the Tigers tonight. I think she got them focused in the way she went after it right away. Thomas had to go through her hands. <laughs> Tabor was sitting over here for two minutes laughing, going, what's he going to say now? Another minute is run off. <laughs> Ahmed to the basket. Ah, No good. You see these little scoop shots that she's doing, though? She's carrying the ball, almost palming it the way she's doing it. It's got a lot of ability. I think Ahmed probably plays really well on the playground, you know? If she plays there. They probably don't allow them to play there anymore. 100 <laughs> seconds to go. Queensboro up by 28. I would imagine, Dave, when they get into college or anything, the coach tells them no, no uh, playground playing for you. This isn't uh, schoolyard basketball. Nope. Kind of thing. And you don't want to get hurt and end your career. She was trying to arc that one and over arced it. We'll have a session about over arcing later. There's only one away left. You better get it in well, then, quickly. Yeah, then we don't need to use it. We'll have that one on our next segment. Huh. Three pointer, no good. Rebounded by Dudley Adams. Chavez to the basket again. No oh. good. And there's a tie up. I tried to keep it going because I used to be a DJ at one time, so. That must have been fun. It really was, you know, when they let you talk. Back, back in the days when they let you talk, Dudley Adams scores right there. You're too young to remember, the, but the, uh, George Michaels you remember, though. George Michaels Sports Machine you remember. He used to uh, be a DJ for ABC, and then when he started doing the Islanders, he used to back-time the face-offs. Always do it right when the puck dropped perfectly. Well, we got 36 seconds left to kill here. I think, the, <laughs> I think this is Kingsborough's third closest game of the year. Greensboro's to be commended. They played a good game. Ahmed, it's good. So now we see well, the final score. Will they double up Kingsboro with 64-32? Drama here at Queensboro. It'll be interesting to see if they can carry this fourth into the next game or maybe the game after that or, you know, whatever. They need some positives coming down the home stretch. Shaptophovic. Herrera for three. No good. And that'll do it. 64 32. And Bob DiNardo gets up on the other side and brings everybody together and says, all right, girls, back to the drawing board for the next one. What are you going to do? This certainly wasn't their worst loss of the year. 
It was the third best. Yep. That's about all we could say about that one. But I, I'm going to give credit to Queensboro because they put the uh, as proverbial uh, pedal to the metal. Well, it wasn't a dramatic second half, but the Lady Tigers did what they had to do. They were off and running, and they translated a few turnovers into about a 10, 12, nothing run, and then they were never to be caught again. Well, more basketball to come. We'll watch the men's teams in a little while. The final score here, Queensboro 64, Kingsboro 32. For Joe Massey, this is QCC alum David Russell. Thanks for watching.